$17.99? I paid 18 quid for a book. Jesus. Hello everybody, it's Charlie and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. Today I am, <coughs> excuse me. Today I am going to be doing a video I thought would be quite a lot of fun. So I got this idea because when I was driving the other day, I was like, I wonder if I could actually pass a driving test now because it took me three times to pass in the first place. But I've gotten into bad habits when I'm driving and I thought, I wonder if I could actually pass a driving test or whether I'd fail. That gave me the idea to see whether I could pass a dental nurse exam. So what I'm gonna be doing is reading some questions from the Questions and Answers for Dental Nurses book. This book is quite a few years old, it's the third edition. I have no idea what edition they're on now. So I'm gonna be asking myself the questions from the book, seeing if I can answer them, and then going to the back of the book and seeing if I've got the answer right. So I hope you guys like that idea. Maybe I'll do a few more of these in the future if it's good and kind of get a mini series going. Anyway, if you would like to see me try and answer these questions and get them correct, then just keep watching. Okay, so let's just go for the first one. So I'm gonna stop. Dental pathology and microbiology. Brilliant. I'm not good at this. I'm just gonna go for the first question. I opened it on this page. I'm just going for the first question. While giving oral health dietary advice, the Clinician is likely to recommend that a patient avoids excessive consumption of which one of the following in order to reduce the occurrence of enamel demineralization? Multiple choice answers are ascorbic acid, citric acid, lactic acid, phosphoric acid, or sulfuric acid. Breaking that question down, it sounds like it's asking what should the patient avoid to reduce the demineralization of the teeth. I would have said citric acid because I know obviously that's in like apples and oranges and lemons and things like that. And I know that that does, it can erode the teeth slightly. So let's see if, if I got that one correct. The correct answer is B, citric acid. Yay, I got the first one right. I mean, that was kind of worked out through what I've learned from dental nursing. But I think most people probably know that things like apples and lemons, limes, and anything with citric acid in is gonna slightly erode the teeth. That was sort of common knowledge slash dental knowledge. So I got the first one right, let's tally that up. Okay, the second question, let's flick through. Assessment and diagnosis. Oh, I hate this section. You think it's gonna be really easy, but on the actual exams, they were really hard. <laughs> Somehow I'm a genius and I keep stopping on the like first page of it. So I'll just go for question one again. A patient attends for an examination complaining of hot and cold sensitivity in the lower left sextant. So that's basically the lower left side. And the dentist suspects a carious lesion is present. Which one of the following radiographs is most likely to confirm the diagnosis? I think I can do this without even looking at the answers. So I think the correct answer is a PA radiograph, periapical. So you've got a choice of dental pantomograph. I don't call it this, but I think that's an OPG, which is the big one that goes around your head. Horizontal bite wing radiograph, occlusal radiograph, periapical radiograph, or vertical bite wing radiograph. Oh, now I'm reading the answers. I'm not so sure. Well, I would have said a PA. Is it really bad that I don't really know what a horizontal vertical bite wing x-ray is? I would just call them bite wings and PAs. I'm gonna go periapical radiograph, D. Correct answer, B. Oh, horizontal bite wing radiographs. Should have known that. I'm not very good at x-rays. When I was at college, you had to get 76% to pass, which doesn't sound like that much, but that means you can only get like four questions wrong because there was 25 questions. I'm gonna try and work out the percentages at the end of this video to see whether I passed, but I'm probably only gonna do like 10 questions, so it won't be completely accurate. Okay, let's go to number three, stop. Domain three, communication. Oh, okay, I should know this one because obviously we deal with communication all the time. So this is oral health instruction. I should know this. Ah! Ah! Oh, I bet the page. A 42 year old patient attends the surgery for a routine dental examination and asks for advice on toothpastes that help remove staining without damaging the enamel. The dentist is most likely to recommend toothpaste containing which of the following ingredients? Biological enzymes, sodium fluoride, sodium monofluorophosphate, stainless fluoride or triclosan. I only know what one of those is. 
I don't think sodium fluoride damages the teeth. I'm pretty sure it doesn't damage your teeth. So let's just go with B, sodium fluoride. Question one, correct answer, A, biological enzymes. What the hell is a biological enzyme? Safe alternative for stain removal. Oh, <laughs> well, I got that one wrong. So that's, that's already over 50% of my answers I've got wrong. It's not really looking good here, is it? Let's move on. Okay, question four, let's go. Stop assessment and diagnosis again. Okay, well this is question 38. When carrying out dental examinations, the dentist is particularly looking for evidence of dental disease such as caries and periodontitis. Which of the following methods is of particular use when attempting to diagnose the presence of periodontal bone loss? I think I know this. The answers are bite wing radiograph, Realt Pro, completed diet sheet, disclosing tablets, and translumination. So I'm gonna go in order of elimination. Disclosing Closing tablet is where you like chew a tablet and it shows you all the plaque you've missed, so it's not going to be that. Completed diet sheet, it's not going to show you bone loss. Realt probe, I know it's used a lot on pregnant women when they can't have a radiograph, so I'm going to say that the best way to test a bone loss is by radiograph, which I think is pretty correct because you can literally see it on the picture. Correct answer A. Yes, I got that right! I should have known that without even looking at the answers, but now I'm back up to 50%, so let's put that as a yes. Okay, question five. Stop. Restorative dentistry and dental materials. Should know this because this is like fillings and stuff. Patient has a full gold crown fitted on the lower left second molar tooth. Oh God, now I'm gonna have to work out what tooth that is. So the lower left seven. I hope that's right. Hey Siri, what tooth is the lower left second molar? Yeah, I got that right, the lower left seven. Whew, at least I knew that. So she's got a gold crown fitting on the lower left second molar tooth, but experiences discomfort in the tooth when closing the mouth fully. Which one of the following items is required to solve the problem? Okay, I think I know this one. So articulating paper, ball ended burnisher, friction grisp, grisp? Friction grip, diamond fissure burr, latch grip stainless steel rosehead burr, wards carver. When you're testing to see the bite of a tooth, you would use articulating paper. What it does is it comes up with a mark on the tooth where they're biting high, so you can see where you need to smooth off. You would need to test if it's high before using either of the burrs. I'm gonna go A, articulating paper. Correct answer, A. Yay! The crown has premature contact, so you would use articulating paper to find where that contact is hitting. So, yes. Right, question six. I'm gonna go further to the back of the book because I feel like I haven't really touched that section yet, so stop. Consent and record keeping. So, again, I'm just gonna go question one. An important requirement when taking patients' medical history is to check their medication to ensure it does not contradict dental treatments. Details of medications can be found in which of the following publications? Well, I'm pretty sure I know what this is, it's the BNF. But to go through the answers, got A1 advice sheet, British National formulary, which is known as the BNF, CQC registration document, GDC standards booklet, HTMO 105 document. The HTMO 105 is your decontamination stuff. GDC standards booklet is the standards you need to perform at to comply with the General Dental Council. CQC registration document, not entirely sure, something to do with the CQC, Care Quality Commission. Uh, the British National Formulary, which is the BNF, which has all the medications in, and the A1 advice sheet. Not really sure what that is, but I'm pretty sure it's answer B, the British National Formulary. Answers, correct answer B, British National Formulary. I knew that one without having to look at the thing. At least I got that one right, so that's another yes. Let's pop that down. Oh, I'm getting quite a few of these right now. I'm excited. Right, let's go again. Let's go for somewhere near the front of the book. So stop. This is general anatomy and physiology. Oh. God, this is not gonna be a good one. It is a regular, regulatory, I'm just gonna skip over that word. It is a regulatory requirement to take a full medical history when a patient attends for dental treatment. Which one of the following medical conditions is most likely to affect the oral cavity? We've got angina, diabetes, hepatitis, hypothyroidism, ulcerative colitis. So again, just going on order of elimination, but I'm pretty sure I know the one. So angina is the heart, so I don't think it's gonna be that. Diabetes, yes, it could be diabetes, but it's all to do with like, your blood sugar and stuff. C, hepatitis, that's the blood, conditions, so I don't think it's that. D, hypothyroidism, so overactive thyroid. Ulcerative colitis, so that's in the stomach. Ulcerative colitis could cause acid reflux, but then acid is not going to give you a cavity, it's just going to erode the teeth. So I'm still going to go with B, diabetes. Correct answer, B. Yes, diabetes. I mean, that was like a fairly easy one, but again, process of elimination. So let's write yes on that one. Okay, question eight now. Stop. 
restorative dentistry and dental materials. Oh. Glass ornament cements have many uses in dentistry, including as a cavity lining material. Which one of the following is the most likely reason for the material to be used as a lining in a deep cavity? Um. Okay, the answers are adhesive to enamel, compatible with filling material, forms a secondary dentine, non-irritant, strong. This one's a bit of guesswork. It is quite strong because sometimes we would use this as a permanent filling material. It's also a non-irritant though. So I don't think it's B and I don't think it's C. So B and C was compatible with filling material and form secondary dentine. So now I'm going between adhesive to enamel, non-irritant and strong. I'm going to go for it's a non-irritant. The reason I'm going for that is because obviously if it's deep down in the cavity, then obviously you can start to get like pain from it and stuff. So I'm going to go with D, non-irritant. Answer D. Yay! Answer D. The deeper the cavity, the closer to any lining material will be to the pulp tissues. Any material used in this situation must therefore be a non-irritant to these tissues. So I was able to put some knowledge there. Oh, I'm quite glad that I got that one right. So that's another yes. On to question nine now. Stop. Dental pathology and microbiology. Oh, again. This is question nine. The pH scale is a measure of the acidity or alkalinity of a solution, with pH 1 being the most acidic, pH 14 being the most alkaline, and pH 7 being neutral. Which one of the following is the usual pH value in the oral cavity several hours after food consumption? Oh, I should know this because I actually remember doing this at college. I mean, you'd think it would be neutral, wouldn't you? Several hours after food consumption. Let me just read out the answers first. So I've got A, 4.5, which would be the more acidic side. B, 5, again, slightly more acidic. C, 5.5, again, the acidic side. D, 7, neutral. Or E, 8.5, which is the more alkaline side. I feel like it would be neutral several hours after eating. So I'm going to go D, 7. Correct answer, D. Oh wait, did I get that right? Yes, I did! I'm so pleased with myself. So I'm gonna put another yes for that one. I think I'm winning. I think I've gotta pass a dental nurse exam, you know. Let's go to the last question now, question 10. So, stop. Minor oral surgery, local anesthesia, and anxiety control. Oh great, picked the hardest one for last. A patient attends the surgery following an unsuccessful repeat root filling of the upper left central incisor, so that's the upper left one. A radiograph shows a distinct periapical area associated with the tooth, but the patient does not want an extraction performed. Which one of the following procedures is carried out to resolve the problem? I think I know the answer before looking at this, and I'm very proud of myself that I know that. I think it's an apisectomy, but let's check the answers just in case. A a, alvelectomy, B, apisectomy, C, phrenectomy, D, opercolectomy, or E, pulpectomy. Oh, maybe it's pulpectomy. Mm. Now I'm wondering if it's pulpectomy or apisectomy. I'm gonna go apisectomy because that was my initial reaction when I read the question. So let's just go for that. Correct answer B, apisectomy. Yay, I got it right! I'm pleased I got that one right. I really didn't think I would because it's to do with like minor oral surgery. That was another, <laughs> just throw my book around. That was another yes. Let's check this. So I got two wrong, which means I got eight right. So that was 10 questions. 10% a question, so I've got 80%, so I did pass. Oh, that is very close to the 76% though. Obviously I know it's not completely accurate because there's 25 questions in the real exam and I just did 10, but I did pass. Just. So that basically brings me to the end of this video now. I really liked doing this. It was actually really fun for me to go back and look at the questions. I think I'm gonna make this into a little mini series if you guys wanna see that. Anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video today. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, click that subscribe button down below, and then click the bell just next to it and that will notify you when I next upload. Pop me a comment in the box below if you would like to see more of these, and I will make sure I do that for you. Anyway, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! -ya.